Hey, what's going on everybody? Amir Fazeli here from Adonis Athletics. They call me the Salty Strength Coach. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about block pulls for the application of fixing the lockout in the deadlift. So a few people messaged me after I put up a video of uh, doing some block pulls the other day on, on Instagram. And they, a couple of them had the same common question. They wanted to know whether block pulls actually help with the deadlift, whether it's a myth that they it doesn't help with the deadlift, whether it's true that it doesn't help with the deadlift because they had heard um, conflicting reviews and conflicting messages from different places on the internet as to whether it, they're actually effective and, and can be successful at improving uh, deadlift lockout. So I said, I'm gonna address it in a video, make it a little bit more comprehensive and uh, talk about it from my point of view in my experience. Uh, now, when I say my experience, what do I mean? Uh, my experience as a national level deadlifter, my experience as holding deadlift records simultaneously in two different, different federations as we speak, uh, in, in two different weight classes across two different federations, and my experience in, in breaking a world re deadlift record, uh, my experience in getting other lifters to also break national level records, break their PBs, uh, achieve deadlifts over 300 at you know under 80 90 kilos body weight and so on so these are I just want to stress these are from my experiences and um, it's just that I have been able to replicate the same results again and again is the reason why I feel like I should address it and the reason why I feel like I have something to be able to offer you guys out there uh, who are having any trouble with the deadlift, but in particular the deadlift lockout, and may be confused as to whether uh, block pulls can help you in the deadlift lockout. Because obviously you don't want to be wasting time doing things that are not going to get you anywhere, which is understandable. We want to make sure that we are making the best use of our time and using exercises that are actually going to improve us in what we are trying to achieve. So let's get straight into it. Do block pulls actually help uh, deadlift lockout? Now, in order to actually answer that question, what we first need to do is determine what mm, criteria do we use, should we use as coaches when qualifying an accessory movement that we give to our, our athletes, our lifters. Accessory movement, variation lifts, and things like that. Let me just explain firstly what I mean by accessory and variation. So variation work is essentially, usually, uh, a very close vari variation, I guess for lack of a better word, of the actual lift. Uh, it's still with the barbell, but it's performed slightly differently. So for example, uh, a variation of the competition bench press is a close grip bench press. A variation of the, uh, of the back squat is a front squat. It's still done with a barbell. It's still very much the same, very similar in regards to movement execution and movement pattern. Uh, and therefore that's what's considered a variation. A variation of the deadlift, competition deadlift, is a pause deadlift, okay? A variation of it is a block pull. An accessory movement are things that typically don't involve the barbell. They can, but typically don't, and they definitely don't resemble the actual movement that's being done. So for example, a dumbbell row can be an accessory movement for the deadlift. Uh, leg extensions could be an accessory movement for, um, for squatting. Leg presses can also be. So as you can see, the, the common theme is that they're not barbell movements. And even if they were barbell movements, like say bent over rows, they do not resemble the actual movement of the lift in any way. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about variation and accessories. In this video, talking about it going forward, just so you understand. So what constitutes how we start to give variation exercises to, to somebody? Variation exercises can only come when you are trying to, when you first identify where there is a uh, deficiency in movement where there is a leakage in power where the bar speed starts to slow down or technique starts to break down and 
you employ variation exercises that will target that particular point. That's how a variation exercise comes about. That's how it gets determined and ultimately gets prescribed, okay? So you, you gotta understand that first because this is very important going forward. An accessory movement gets prescribed after the fact of a variation. In terms of order of importance, for me, the first thing, the most important thing, is the actual competition lift itself, okay? So you can't ignore training deadlifts from the ground like a competition style in the same stance as your competition style. Then after that, the next most important thing comes variation work. So uh, something that's very similar to the deadlift will typically use a barbell and there are only one or two differences to the actual lift as it's going to be done in the competition. Then after those two are sorted and are performed, and if there is, uh, if, the, if it's called for in the program, if there is energy left over, if the athlete can recover from it, then you start to put in some accessory movements. So if need be, you start to do some maybe good mornings or back extensions or whatever it may be to target the particular muscle groups that are lagging, the muscle groups that are weak for that particular exercise, okay? So that's the ideology and the theory behind what, where and how variation movements and then accessory movements are prescribed, okay? The logic behind why block pulls get prescribed ever is to address the lockout, right? Somebody's got a weak lockout, so some people will, will say block pulls is what you need, okay? Now, there is some argument amongst certain people, certain coaches, certain lifters, that block pulls don't do anything for the lockouts. They basically put out, a lot of people put out a blanket statement, essentially, saying that block pulls are ineffective for improving deadlift lockout. In of itself, it's very short-sighted to say something like that, especially as a blanket statement. Now, let's talk about where the common scenarios are for deficiency or lack of ability to lock out a deadlift. So, scenario number one. A deadlift lockout can suffer when a lifter is having issues with maintaining good posture and good positioning coming off the floor. So, typically, these are round back deadlifters. Either they just lift in a rounded back, that's just the nature of their lift, or they start straight, but as they engage, as soon as they start to lift off, they lose position. Their back rounds and and so it will obviously remain rounded as they're coming up and that's going to drastically affect the deadlift lockout. The second scenario when it comes to uh, weak deadlift lockouts is people losing position through the lift. So they lift off the ground fine, the back is fairly straight, but as they are coming up, as they're getting towards mid shin, three quarters of the way above, like up the shin, they start to lose back position. You see that their back is starting to round and round and round more and more. Now, here's where it gets tricky with this one. This problem could be due to uh, spine erector strength or weakness, but it also could be due to hip weakness. So the reason why this can happen and the reason why it could be due to hip weakness is because if the bar is being lifted, and the hips don't have the strength to handle that weight, what the body will try and do is try and get the hips closer to the load so that the moment arm shortens and the, the total work that the hips have to do to lock out is going to be less, okay? So what happens is that the body will round out the back so that the bar gets closer to the hip and this will make the work that the hips have to do much, much less in order to be able to lock out. And that's why you typically see the hips get locked out much earlier in a case like this. But it could also be due to weak spine erectors. It could be both. Now you might think, well, which one is it? And how do we determine it? There is a way to determine it, but in the forefront, it's not as important to identify which one it is. Because as I said before, 
the most important thing is, is to identify where the bar speed starts to slow down and technique is starting to break down and prescribing movements in terms of variations rather than trying to identify and target weak muscle groups. The way, the best way to get rid of weaknesses is to do it through the employment of certain movements that are specific to that weakness rather than trying to identify mus musculature that's weak and trying to bring up the musculature. Although it's something that you should do, it's not the primary way of doing things. It's not the most bang for buck or a way of doing things. So onto the third scenario. The third scenario is when somebody gets to lockout position, they're pretty much at or above the knee. Their back is dead straight. It's in a good position. It's not rounding, but they just can't push the hips forward. Okay. In a case like that, typically the weakness is coming from the hips. It's not to do really with the, with the spine erectors or anything like that. The hips are weaker relatively than the back. It's not a very common issue that you would see uh, because as I explained before, typically if the hips are weak, the, the upper back will round out to try and get the hips closer into the bar. Typically, it's, it's very rare. It's very rare that you would see somebody get to above the knee, have their hips um, not be able to lock out and be able to keep the back dead straight. But it's something that, that you could observe. It, it's, it definitely exists, right? So let's now talk about how you go about fixing things and where the ideologies and the reasonings comes from. But let me just reiterate uh, by saying that the primary way of handling any weakness is not to go to a muscular, uh, a, a movement that will that will target any muscular improvement or development. That's not the that's not the first thing you go to. It's something that you would go to, but not the first thing. The first thing that you would do, and the first thing that you would focus on is figuring out another movement that's similar to the deadlift that will target that particular weakness that you have. Once you have identified the movement that will, that will improve and target the, the weakness that exists, then you can further reinforce musculature and further reinforce that variation movement by doing accessory work. So I'm gonna now run through how block pulls will be used in each of the scenarios that I just mentioned. So the first one, problem being lifting off the floor and being in a rounded position as you're coming off the ground. Typically, in a case like this, when somebody is rounded, there are two things you need to address. One or the other or both. One is actually just cueing. So somebody who is starting out on the deadlift may just not be cued enough, be, may not have been pointed out to them that they need to keep their back straighter as they're pulling off the ground. Typically beginner level lifters, early intermediates, they just may have gone through their training all that time and they just simply didn't know, didn't recognize that that's a problem. That's something that they should fix or improve upon. So just by telling them, letting them know that to keep the back straighter in one way or another, however you want to cue it as a coach, that can in itself fix the problem. The other thing is uh, obviously the strength. So the strength of the, of the back, of the lats, of the spine erectors to keep the torso in the position that it's supposed to be as they're coming off the ground, making sure that the back does not round. Now, in a case like this, block pulls are not the go-to, but there are cases where block pulls can successfully be used to fix somebody's back position off the ground. Uh, and I'll explain how. So typically if somebody is somebody's problem is not cueing, so they are aware that they're supposed to keep their back straight and they simply can't maintain that position as they're pulling off the ground, they need to strengthen the back, right? Now, yes, they can do accessory stuff and should do accessory stuff such as rowing, uh, any types of other movements that will develop their spine erectors to, to have better strength such as good mornings. Uh, to be able to maintain that position as they're coming off the ground. Again, those are just simply at the end of the day, uh, accessory movements. We need to also have a look at what type of variation movements we can use to do the same thing. There are a multitude of variation exercises, yes. 
and uh, th those multitude of variation exercises, there are ones that are more effective and there are ones that are less effective, yes. But in some cases, you can successfully employ block pulls to strengthen the back and to teach proper back tightness and stiffness as they are pulling off the ground. You are putting them in a more elevated position so there is less things to think about in regards to alignment of the body and you can just get the athlete to think about back tightness, back tightness, back tightness and pulling off the block. At, typically this is done at a higher block position because the main aim is to purely focus on and develop upper back uh, strength and size. So block pulls in cases like that can absolutely be used effectively. Again, it's not a go-to that, go, that I would employ as a variation exercise, but they can be used for a case like that with some lifters. And I have used them and it can absolutely be successful. Now, let's get to the next one, which is probably the more important one. Back rounding through the lift and how block pulls can be used uh, in fixing that issue. So, as you are lifting off the ground, uh, the back might be straight, but as you're going through the lift, your back is losing position. As we said before, this could be due to either weak hips or a weak, weak spine erectors. It could also be due to weak cueing to maintain lap tightness. This is very, very important. Weak bracing and weak lap tightness can, can definitely play a factor here. So assuming we're assuming that that's sorted. We don't have an issue with that. If you don't have an issue with that and you are pulling off the ground and your back is continuously rounding as you're going through the lift, the issue could be either weak hips or weak upper back or weak spine erectors, right? Again, we don't care at this point which one it is exactly. What we want to do is we want to employ another movement that's similar to the deadlift that will fix that issue. And the issue is that we need to get some kind of a movement that will cue you to maintain position as you're going through the lift. What is also probably happening is that through the lift, obviously there is a point where your, your, um, your ability to develop max force and maintain that max force development through the lift is dropping where, wherever it may be that you're losing that position. Block pulls can be immensely effective at doing doing exactly that, teaching you exactly that. Because when you are doing block pulls, particularly at a higher, uh, higher height, closer to your knee, what you're doing is you are automatically making the knees straighter, obviously, by nature. That means there is slightly less quad involvement in getting the bar off the blocks in that position. That means you are forced to make, uh, to rely on your posterior chain, your spine erectors, and maintaining good tightness as you're coming off the blocks. If you are disciplined enough to tell yourself to keep an absolutely straight back and maintain really rigid torso and lap tightness as you're coming off the blocks, which is going to be very hard because there is no momentum going into that position as you normally would when you're pulling off the ground, it can be a very, very effective tool in firstly teaching you correct positioning, teaching you to maintain that positioning at that point where you are leaking power essentially, where you're weak, where you are not capable of maintaining maximum force output, but it can all go together and combine really strongly to be able to get you to accelerate through that point and, and maintain tightness through that point to not round out just because the hips are a little bit weak and you wanna kinda get through that point by any means necessary and we'll worry about the lockout later. Well, when you get to the lockout, it's very hard for the spine erectors to extend or re-extend at that position. And then we have the third scenario where you're getting to right around knee level, your back is straight, but your hips are just not coming through. And so the problem is typically, like I said, not really going to be a spine erector issue. They're obviously holding position. The issue is typically going to be due to hips or hamstring, uh, depending on how straight the knees are at that point. And so again, in this case, you are employing a movement at that certain position 
to be able to get you through that point. So obviously with a case like that, the block pull would be a little bit higher up, probably right underneath the kneecap. And as long as you are pulling well and not hitching, you know, pushing your hips under so that you are squatting the bar up from that position, then it can be very effective in teaching you to generate force, teaching your hips to generate force from that position. Again, it comes down to cueing. It comes down to doing it correctly. If you're going to do block pulls and you're just going to round your back just to get the, get the bar up or you're going to push your hips under and hitch the weight just to get the bar up, that's not going to do anything for your deadlift. I agree. In a case like that, block pulls can be absolutely useless for, uh, ish, uh, for addressing any, any problems and fixing any issues that you have with deadlift lockout. But if you do them correctly, if you pick the right weight, if you cue yourself properly to hold position as you pull off the block, which is going to absolutely suck because there's no momentum and you want to, you really want to just round the back just so you can get the bar up. If you resist those urges, you can really use block pulls to your favor uh, in order to be able to strengthen your deadlift lockout. Once you do those things right, you employ the correct exercise variation for your deadlift problem then you further reinforce the muscle groups that are weak to really round it out, to really make it a good program where you properly address what your issue is. With all that being said, there is one more uh, very important benefit of block pulls that it often gets overlooked. And you can really understand it if you've been there, especially at a slightly higher level, um, competing. When you do block pulls, obviously you can overload. You can handle slightly more weight and do it for reps even. That plays a very huge psychological aspect for a lifter when approaching that same weight that they've done for reps and reps from a slightly higher position and they see that weight on the floor now during competition, it can feel very liberating knowing that you've held that weight in your hand you know what it feels like, your back is capable of it, you know, your body is capable of supporting it. That psychological aspect is very, very important, guys. And to ignore it as a, as a very important part of just training itself, especially if you're trying to train high level competitors, high level deadlifters, it would be a shame. So that's a little bit about my experiences in regards to block pulls and how it can affect uh, the deadlift positively, how it can really help you in your lockout. It needs to be employed properly. Uh, it needs to be done, done well in order to actually help you um, with, your, with your deadlift issue. It needs to be at the right height. It needs, you need to pick the correct weight and you need to be really disciplined in keeping the right body position as you're pulling off the block. If you do that, I can guarantee you, block pulls can absolutely help you with your deadlift. Anyway guys, that's it for, for this episode. I hope it helps you out. I hope it answers a few of your questions. Until the next episode, this is Amir Fazeli from Adonis Athletics.